All right, welcome back to another projectile motion example for Chapter 3 in Physics 125. Now, this one is uh, a lot of fun to do in class, and so we're missing out on, on some of the experimental nature of it. It also echoes a uh, lab that I'm not sure we're going to get a chance to do with our smaller set of on-campus time. But the idea is we have this dart launcher, and um, I think I mentioned in the lecture it's this fly swatter. So I found a picture of it online. <laughs> it's just this little tiny spring, uh, and then it, it shoots this piece of plastic uh, that has like a little bit of mesh, and it's intended to be a fly swatter, but uh, I have never successfully gotten a bug with it. And so the idea is we're going to shoot this little piece of spring-loaded plastic uh, starting one meter above the ground. So from the starting point to the ground is one meter in height. And we watch as it shoots across the room and lands on the ground. And in class, we normally actually shoot it and it actually lands on the ground and then we get a meter stick out and we measure it. But in this case, we're going to uh, have to fake some data that the final location where it landed is 3.4 meters away from where it started, which means that the starting point horizontally was zero meters, the starting point vertically was one meter, and the ending point is zero meters in height. All right, so what we have is a very different set of starting information compared to what we normally do. Our goal is to estimate the initial velocity of the dart as it leaves the launcher. And one of the really, really key things here is just like the previous example, we are launching it sideways, horizontally, which means that we're trying to find the x initial velocity where we have specifically decided that the y initial velocity is zero. We didn't fire it at an angle because that would just make our math harder without really adding to our physics understanding. All right, so the reason why we include this example, uh, not just because it's fun to um, shoot that piece of plastic across the room, is because this is the first time that we have to solve for the initial velocity here in chapter three. If we think back to examples when it happened in chapter two, we remember possibly that they were slightly harder to figure out. And that's because when we write down our rephrased question, it doesn't actually work so well for initial velocity or for acceleration. The key thing in chapter three is we can't ask about the acceleration for projectile motion problems. We already know it. The acceleration in the y direction is gravity, and the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So this is really the only tough type of question that we have. So we want to make sure we know how to deal with it. What I can really highlight for us is that if we aren't sure how to rephrase the question, we can just look through our entire toolkit and find what tools actually have v not x in them. One of the tools is just the fact that the final velocity in the x dire direction is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction. That's not actually all that helpful to us. We don't know the final um, x velocity because if we did, the problem would be done. The other tool that does have the initial velocity in the x direction that should be useful to us is the xt equation. So if we write that out, we note that we now actually have already figured out a goal of ours. It's the only equation that has our true unknown variable in it. But now we figure out that there's a second issue here. We need to find t in order to use this equation. So in this case, we're trying to find v naught x. And to do so, we have to first find t. And we're finding t when 
If we say three point, x equals 3.4 meters, we're stuck using the tool that we know we can't use yet. And so instead, we're going to find t right at this spot when y equals 0 meters. So again, to reiterate the trouble that we had in step three of our problem solving process, we know that this is the only tool that has our end goal in it, and we don't have the time, but we can find the time. So we're going to use the yt equation. yt equation. So let's write out the yt equation. y equals y naught plus v naught yt minus one half gt squared. The final y is zero. The initial y is one plus by definition when we hit this or we started this horizontally, the initial velocity in the y direction is 0, minus 1 half times 9.8 times t squared. And this is 1.0. Um, we're not worried about significant figures in the lecture portion of this course. We may have mentioned that in a previous video. We can just always kind of default assume that everything has three significant figures. All right, let's clean this up a bit, but a little bit above the bottom of the page. 0 equals 1 minus 4.9t squared. So we're going to add 4.9t squared to both sides. We will divide both sides by 4.9. And then we realize that in order to get t, we're going to have to take the square root of all of that. So 1.0 divided by 4.9. When we take the square root, we get 0 0.452 seconds. All right, so we're not quite finished with the problem. We know that the reason why we found t was so that we could use the xt equation. So now we'll rewrite that just so it's right where we're about to plug stuff in. The final x is 3.4. The initial x is 0. I'm going to um, save myself a step and just uh, get rid of it. The initial velocity in the x direction is our unknown times 0 0.452. So we will divide the left and the right side by 0 0.452. And we get 7.5 meters per second is our initial velocity for this bug launcher. All right. So let's do a quick check of does this make sense. All right, so 7.5 meters per second. We'll do a quick check. That's a little bit more than 15 miles an hour, maybe 16, 17 miles an hour. And um, although it's moving somewhat quickly, it still has gravity acting on it, and so it's going to drop. The idea that that quickly, it can still drop in a couple of meters, so that's about 10 feet away from where we started, that seems reasonable enough. We know we're not trying to throw it as fast as a baseball, for example. That would be like 90 miles an hour. And we also know that it's gone a lot further than, uh, for example, the previous problem where we had the marble rolling and the marble didn't make it as far as this one did. So for all of the kind of intuition that we can build for this kind of problem, certainly that initial speed is reasonable for us. So I want to remind us of why this particular example is so useful. It is because we are solving for the initial velocity, which tends to be one of the harder setups that we might see in this in this chapter. It doesn't show up nearly as often because usually if we're trying to think about a real situation, we know how fast something is going at the start and we want to know what's going to happen in the future. But it is still an important skill for us to be able to build is how to deal with situations like that. All right, we've got plenty more examples yet, so I will see you in those next videos.